What's poppin' T Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I am here with my all T all shade power book for force ep season one episode seven review. For anybody that's gonna ask, I have Cork Mac lip pencil on my lip, along with Artist Couture new lipstick in the shade Angel Baby and their lip gloss in the shade Thirst Trap. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Also, this outfit that I'm wearing, I got from Pretty Girl Parlor Curvy Teak. You all saw the pictures in the beginning of this video. If you like it or would like to check out more pieces, hit up prettygirlparlorcurvyteak.com. I have a 20% discount code, which is PINK20. It is a plus size boutique that has bomb clothing. Every time I get dressed up for my reunion um, reviews, I always wear items from Pretty Girl Parlor Curvy Teak. Love her clothes, Back black owned business. So please support, and I love this outfit. This two pieces, everything. So once again, hit up Pretty Girl Parlor Curvy Teak and use my pink 20 discount code. All right, you guys, so on tonight's episode, Liliana takes her thick ass <laughs> to the club to get, you know, to give the dealers a little bit of taste of this Delilah. So we also see that they have some other hoes in the club, you know, working their magic, going around kissing everybody. I was like, y'all gonna get mono or herpes on the lip and ill. Somebody gonna get a cold sore. <laughs> So at Claude Crib, we see her talking to Tommy and she says that she wants to go bigger, bigger, badder than ever. And Tommy was like, no, nah, we got to take this shit slow. And plus the price for this is too high. <clears throat> and she was like, like, this is supposed to be like a boutique designer drug. And he was like, but everybody's not going to be able to afford it. And the cost of making it is too high. We got to dumb this shit down a little bit and make it affordable for everybody. Claude, however, is very unsure about this because she wants to have this bougie Trump drug. <laughs> Don't it look like Claude, Claude would be a Trump supporter? Just my thought. So Diamond and Jannard are at the barbershop with a homie Blackston, who's back in town. Uh, you know, old boy from the shy. He was on the shy the first few seasons, and then he got killed off. So they talking or whatever, rapping, and D Mac and Marshall come in with this genius business opportunity. And opportunity, and this whole scene was just so funny to me. I loved seeing Marshall and D Mac play off each other in this scene. So they come in with um, this business opportunity where Marshall's cousin that lives in Gary and in Indiana, you know, is trying to move weight and they basically want to be the couriers of taking, you know, back and forth, giving them product, getting money or whatever, basically being some use. So Janard is down. He ready to go. He want to expand. But Diamond is like, nah, we need to stick with what we know. We don't know their territory. We don't know these people. Like, it's just too much too soon. Like, just pump your brakes. Um, he just feels like it's not worth, worth the risk. Janard tells DMAC that in order to gain his trust, however, that he needs for him to find Tommy so he can kill him that night. D-Mac thinking like fuck because he knows that Tommy and his father are connected in some type of way or does I don't know if he knows for a fact that that's his uncle because I don't know if he caught that part of the conversation because we did see him walk off but um he was like all right, all right I got you or whatever because you know he want this come up or whatever so Jannard is planning on basically going behind Diamond's back like he always does Another thing that I'm going to nitpick on in this episode is I need for them to stop dyeing the actor Chris Lofton's hair, putting that Beijing in the top of his hair to fill in his hairline and the top of his head. 
cut that nigga hair off and have him go bald too because that is not the move or make this nigga wear hats because it's noticeable and I hate it. So, Jannard, uh, I'm sorry. So, then we see Walter at the crib in that same damn room. I'm like, can we please have this man in a bedroom or something? I'm so tired of seeing this goddamn office. I'm like, did y'all run out of money on set for different sets? Like, what the fuck? So, he's looking at lung cancer brochures. Oh, been there, done that. Didn't have lung cancer, but you know. And he just cannot bring himself to get treatment or anything. So, he rips the papers up and throws it in the fireplace. Uncle Paulie comes in and is like, you know, what's up? What's going on or whatever? And Walter tells him that they got to get ready for the Serbians. And he was like, wow, we ain't got no problems with the Serbians. And he was like, for what they did to my son. <laughs> you got a fucking problem, Paulie? <laughs> So Paulie was like, no, but we're not as strong as we once were. You opened the gate to hell with this shit, Walter. Like, and I don't know if you're ready for this. And Walter was like, because I'm the fucking devil. <laughs> that actually sounded good. So Vic is at Gloria's crib, uh, opening the blinds and shit with his boxes on and giving us a party. And I was like, what's good, Vic? Shit. Yeah, I thought your little weak ass wasn't working with nothing, but I saw that side print. And I was like, hey, white boy. <laughs> so, um, he want to go get breakfast and shit. And he see that Gloria has left him a note saying she didn't dip because she needed a minute to herself. Uh, cause you know, they're not going to ever be able to get under his father's thumb. So he looking like, man, ain't nobody got time for this shit. It's too early. So he called her phone. He go to voicemail. He like, look, you need to call me. And I know he was pissed because I know he wanted that morning nut. So Tommy, Liliana, and Claude are at the lab with the doc. And Tommy now says that he wants to expand with a more affordable drug. And I was like, Right? Did y'all forget what y'all just wrote in the first scene between them where he was saying he want to take it slow and she wanted to expand? Now y'all got it where Tommy want to expand with an affordable drug and now Claw saying that she want to stay exclusive. <sighs> Don't y'all start this fuck shit. Y'all been doing good. Y'all been doing good. Don't piss me off. So the doc agrees with Claw because she was like, if we dumb down the materials, it's going to be easy to knock off this drug and we don't want that. Liliana, of course, agrees with Tommy because to make it affordable, they can move it like they move crack. So, um, in the end, since the doc has no say-so, Liliana and Tommy win the vote. So, Jannard lets Marshall, D. Mac, and Blackson know that they're going to move forward with this Gary Indiana shit behind Diamond's back. Like, he is not waiting on Diamond. Fuck Diamond, pretty much. Marshall's cousin, we find out, got a few screws loose because dude was in the military. Um, And Jannara tells them that, you know, Diamond just make one move at a time. He's slow. He's scared to expand. And at the end of the day, he ain't going to find out anyway. You know, damn well he going to find out, but okay. So, um, you can tell though that Blackson was kind of weary, much like how Elijah's character was. He was kind of looking like, damn, this is how he moving against his own brother? Like, I don't know about this. And I feel like if Elijah and Janor were supposed to be so close, they didn't even make any mention of him in this episode, like, to show him being sad or anything. It's like, he did, move on, it's over with. Like, they needed to keep that up a little bit more. So, the doc tells Liliana that she gotta get her out of there, because people at her job gonna start to notice that her ass ain't fucking showing up to work. So, Liliana was like, alright, look, call your boss. So, the girl was like, Ooh. So, she get her phone to call her boss, and Liliana was like, what's your boss name? And I forgot what she said. Liliana snatches the phone and pretends to be a, a, a nurse or a nurse secretary, whatever the fuck, and tells them that the doc gonna be out for medical reasons. So that bitch was looking like, God damn, because you know she was gonna probably be like, somebody <laughs> Sister trying to get the fuck up out of that lab, bitch. That light not good for black girl skin. So um, the doc did say, look, girl, like, I got a date, <laughs> and it's the third date, like, with this dude, I really like him, and Liliana was like, ooh, girl, a third date, like, that's a big one, 
<laughs> I really like Liliana because even though she a tomboy, she's still a girly girl. And I like they make her character funny and a wisecracker. And she's super tough. I really like her character. I hope they do not get rid of her anytime soon. Love her. Love her. Love her. Love her so much. So Tommy returns to the lab and tells the, uh, and the doc persists once again that, you know, if they do this, this drug is going to get knocked off if they change his recipe. And Tommy ain't trying to hear it. Like, he is banking on this shit hard. And I was like, damn, Tommy, calm the fuck down a little bit. So he tells Liliana that, you know, he's going to have to go on a date with old girl because they can't let her out of their sight. So Tommy and JP take a walk and he apologizes to his brother for the way, you know, he came at him and uh, JP is steady on some, you know, I want to work for you. Like, let me do this. Da, 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 da. And Tommy was like, look, I don't want nothing to happen to you. And JP was like, well, what about my club? Like, we can do it at my club. And he was like, no, nah, I've been there, done that. Like, as you know, truth. <laughs> so Tommy was like, you know, we'll figure out something. I'm like, Tommy, just hold off on this shit as best and as long as possible. Cause we all know as soon as JP get caught up in this shit, his ass is going to fucking die at some point. We already know this. So Tommy then asks, like, what's going on with Miriam? And we learned that the grandmother has had a stroke or something or aneurysm. So uh, JP was like, we need to let Kate know. He was like, why the fuck do you want to let her know? Like, after everything that she's done to us, why the fuck would you want to reach out to her? He was like, I'm telling you, she ain't no good. And he was like, well, you know that I don't. You know, and uh, JP was like, uh, she left me as soon as she cut the umbilical cord and I'm still choosing to forgive her. What the fuck did she do to you? And Tommy was like, decided to love a ghost instead of me. And you know, that was because, you know, ghost left her that money. And as soon as she got that money, she basically told Tommy, fuck you. Um, I like the ghost references. Enough of it. Okay. We're on episode seven at this point. We get it. Okay. Enough of the ghost references. It's cute, but all right. So, um, Walter tells Vic and Claude that he's going to get security <laughs> and he's going to up security and put two guards on Claude because she needs protection. And Claude was like, uh, no, how about you just give me a gun? And Walter was like, you don't have the strength to pull a trigger. I guarantee that. <laughs> So she was basically like, huh, you sure about that? Because like, you don't know me. You must not know about me. I was like, Claudia got one body or two bodies, but one with a gun. And think she motherfucking ghost. <laughs> she thinks she that bitch, my nigga. She thinks she Nino Brown in this motherfucker. Or Keisha. So, um... Tommy catches D-Mac following him. And I told y'all on last week's episode when D-Mac was following him that Tommy noticed that he was being followed when he was walking to his car and he was looking around. So I was right about that. So he, uh, you know, was like, who the fuck are you? Why the fuck you keep on following me? Like, why don't, no, he ain't saying who the fuck are you. He was like, why do you keep on following me? Who sent you, Jadard or Diamond? He was like, it don't even fucking matter. You just need to watch your motherfucking back and keep your head on the motherfucking swivel, bitch. And Tommy was like, why are you helping me? And he was like, I got my reasons. And he walks off. So he knows it's to some instance that, you know, Tommy is his family, you know. So I'd be glad when they make that shit come around full circle and JP find out this is his son. Tommy finds out this is his nephew and he they somehow try to get this little nigga out the life. <sighs> now that I'm thinking about it, they might kill D-Mac because that'll be even more fucked up if JP get his son back only to lose him. And then I could see JP character turning to drugs. That might happen too. Um, so Liliana is at Claude's crib. And they rap into each other. And Claude asks Liliana, has she and Tommy ever fucked? I was like, girl, why you open this girl coochie? Mind your business, sweater set. <laughs> so then the elevator opens and all the hoes that Claude got working for her come and they basically lay down the land of the law that y'all signed an NDA. You don't talk about this to anybody. Y'all do get knocked. Here's the number to call. Don't call me ho. Da, 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 da. So after they little meeting, Liliana peeps Claude talking to the girl about her brother Vic. So she looking like, mm, no about you, sweater set. <laughs> So, at the lab, Tommy tells Doc to get rid of the glow part of the drug because 
it's a basically a fingerprint leading back to us. You know, they all thinking about how cute the shit is and how nice of a party trick it is. But bitch, if somebody do start knocking this shit off, we the only motherfuckers is making this damn shit glow. That's going to make it easy for the affair to come down on us, which is smart. So outside, he's taking a smoke and Liliana joins him and she tells him that, you know, old girl is tired. She need a break. Like we can only keep her cooped up in her for so long. And... She was like, you know, what if she can't pull it off? And Tommy was like, she gonna do it. She gonna do it. Like, because he don't want to kill that girl. Um, Tommy reminds her that you're also here to be learning, you know, this fucking recipe so we don't even have to fuck with her no more. So Tommy then goes on to say how he ain't never had nothing to himself, you know, and how people just switched on him. And this is his first time being his own boss. And Liliana was like, you going you gonna, you do this. Like, I believe in you. Like, you don't need ghosts or none of that shit. And she was like, but you got to stop pushing everybody so hard. Like, is you going real hard about this shit? Calm the fuck down, S.A. So she then lets him know that Claude ass is working the angle. And he was like, find out where the fuck Vic is going to be tonight. So we then see Vic at the club missing Gloria all on his phone looking at text messages and pictures and shit and Claude has one of her girls go over to him um you know to hit on him or whatever so then we see Jannard, Marshall, Blackson and some of the other boys at an urban club or whatever or a black club <laughs> And uh, this Marshall, first time going to the club, like he is just a cookie in a candy store, bitch. And he is loving every moment. One thing that I will say, we just saw a scene like this on um, Raising Canaan when um, they had Canaan's little best friend go to the club with Lulu. It was his first time going to a club or whatever. He got killed. So I wish that they would have figured out a different... Uh, the writers need to start talking to each other because it's like y'all having back-to-back -back scenes in different series that are similar with a young character, boy first time going to the club, acting thirsty, ooh and an eye, like y'all just did that over there. Y'all got to start corresponding with each other or something. So, um... The little boy, Marshall, tried to get on one of the girls or whatever. Janora tried to get on the same girl. And the girl says that she liked Marshall's approach better. And uh, Blackson was like, Marshall won, Janard nothing. So Liliana, we see, is on the date with the doc. <laughs> and she is just being a third wheel, getting on they fucking nerves. Very funny. She has really good comedic timing. Claude then has one of her girls get on Jannard, um and test out Dahlia on him. Of course, Jannard crackhead ass is loving every fucking second of it as soon as he gets a hit of it. Diamond has Adrian at the shop after hours, the girl he met at the uh, diner. They talking and they rapping with one another and they fuck in the shop. Tommy and JP go to the club. Uh, where Vic said they scoping out the place. Well, Tommy scoping out the place. JP thinking they spending brotherly time with each other until he realizes that Tommy is there on work. Tommy sees, you know, a girl uh, test Dahlia out on Vic. He was like, you motherfucker. Like, you got to be kidding me with this fucking bitch Claude. So he immediately jets because he got to go handle that shit. So, Doc and Liliana try to make, you know, a more affordable version of this drug. Claude comes in and asks Liliana, you know, what happened to Tommy's last business partner? And Liliana, of course, ain't giving her no kind of motherfucking information because she knows that Claude cannot be trusted. Um, the new version that Liliana and the Doc was working on did not fucking go through. It failed again. So, things is looking real bleak now. So, Jannard is in the car, fucking one of Claude workers, high as a kite, all fucking Dahlia. Meanwhile, Marshall and Blackston is standing outside the club, chopping it up, drinking and shit, downtown Chicago. And next thing we know, we see D-Mac walk up on dude, on Marshall, and just 
punch him in the back of his motherfucking head and shit. He get two good licks off on him until Marshall stand the fuck up and knock his ass the fuck out as well. But Marshall takes it even two steps further by pulling the gun out on D-Mac. It ain't no loyalty among street niggas. Meanwhile, Black's like, nigga, what the fuck is you doing? Put that motherfucking gun up. Like, do you know where the fuck we at? We in downtown. And downtown is a lot different than, you know, other parts of Chicago. Like, what the fuck are you doing? So he like, put the gun up. Marshall refuses and basically tells D Mac that he done with him because he didn't even want to hit the jazz club they've been fucking up her lately like I'm doing this on my own I'm cutting you out the motherfucking deal bitch <laughs> so D Mac looking like damn like really like you really good at trying to X me out so Blackston gets them to finally break the shit up and tells D Mac to go and um uh he also calls Marshall stupid for pulling out a gun in fucking downtown Chicago. Um, and then the girl from the club comes out with him and he was like, <laughs> yeah, Marshall won, me won or some shit like that. He said, whatever he said, it was fucking cute as hell. It was cute. It was funny. So Janora, meanwhile, is still in the car fucking old girl. And he was like, where you get this shit from? And she was like, I can't tell you, but I can tell you, you know, basically hook it up for you or whatever. So the guards is outside the lab watching fucking Claude ass. They bored as fuck. One of the guards gets out to take a leak and Tommy immediately walks up and just shoots both of them. I'm like, God damn, Tommy, can you ask questions sometimes? So Tommy goes off on Claude for involving her family and everything, even though she said she didn't want them involved. And um, he was like, you know, if I got to second guess you, all of this shit is going to go away. And Claude was like, it won't happen again. Where are my father's men? And he was like, shit, I'm ready to go get fucking buried. <laughs> like, bitch, yeah. It's your motherfucking fault. And she was like, no, it's my dad's fault because he didn't fucking listen. So Liliana was like, I told you you couldn't trust her as they... <laughs> So Adrian meets with one of her coworkers um, about the story that she's writing on Diamond. Told y'all she was a journalist or a writer. And um, the coworker wants her to write a story about him getting out of jail and basically doing the same shit that landed him in jail and how he fucked up his life two times over. But Adrian is starting to have feelings for him and doesn't want to write that story. But her coworker was basically like, I mean, if you don't want to write it, I can have somebody else do it. So obviously this person is her boss. She was like, no, 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 I'll write it. But you can tell, like, she catching fifis. So I think she going to end up writing it. And he going to find out about it, of course, that he was being used. And he going to stop fucking with her. And she going to beg for his trust back. And da, 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 da. So, um... Where was I? Yeah. At the shop the next day, Janora comes in raving about Delilah, talking about this new drug and how if they get their hands on it, it's going to skyrocket. This will be the thing that really put money in their pockets. Diamond, of course, ain't trying to go back to jail off no new shit that he don't know nothing about. Where it came from, none of, like if it's gonna kill motherfuckers or nothing. Janora was like, you know, that pussy you getting got your head fucked up. <laughs> and you could just tell that Diamond is the more logical of the two. He thinks things out where Janora is just jumping on shit, don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's good to have both of their personality traits and one can honestly compliment the other. It's just, I don't know, it's fucked up. It's hard because you, you go with the wild, unhinged one and just don't give a fuck. And, you know, just try to look at anything or do you go with the logical thinker that could probably hold you back? So, Vic tells Walter that he and Gloria are over and uh, Walter was like, give it time. It will pass. <laughs> so, Vic blames himself for choosing his father over Gloria and Walter was like, but we're fucking family. <laughs> Vic was like, yeah, we may be family. We may be blood, but she's my home. I was like, panties on the floor. They're drenched, they're soaked, waterfall splash. Yes, that was a great line. So for the first time, you could honestly tell that Walter felt bad for once. And I was like, is the old man finally changing his ways? I doubt it. So Tommy meets Diamond at the diner and Diamond tells him that Walter was behind the Serbian hit. Diamond then asks him what he knows about Delilah. Of course, Tommy plays dumb. And uh, 
Diamond was like, at first I wasn't interested in this, but now I'm interested because this right here could rewrite history. So I could tell that Tommy's wheels were churning and he's thinking about bringing Diamond in at some point. So Jannard Marshall and Blackston meet with Marshall's cousin from Gary, Indiana with a wondering eye. Baby, that eye was over here. <laughs> And I was like, if they don't take this opportunity to do a good eye joke, they tried it, but it really wasn't that executed well. Baby, I would have had that eye on the floor rolling laughing. So, Jannard and him go back and forth. Jannard offers him bricks of cocaine. They now in business together. This shit is going to go south. Jannard, I mean, Jannard is going to fuck up some shit again. It's going to end up being in some type of war type of shit. Or the niggas from Gary and the Ander gonna get over on them. It's about to be some shit with this whole thing. And him and Diamond gonna end up getting into it because he went behind his back. So Tommy returns to the lab and Wowzers, the doc, has made a new version of Delilah that is more affordable. Tommy, of course, is ecstatic about this. He pours some out for everybody to try. Doc was like, uh, you know, so happy you guys are happy. I'm out of here. And uh, she was like, but you know, I'll be back tomorrow. But you could tell she had to look on her face like, I'm getting the fuck out of here ASAP. You niggas will never see me again. But Tommy was like, you don't want to, you know, take a try? So she comes over and they all take a sniff, a snort, and then... <laughs> The Delilah kicks in and we are in business. So we got three more episodes to go and uh, there will be no more Power 50 Cent shows for six months. Six whole months. So we'll have P-Valley up next and I'm pretty sure we'll have something else coming out in between that time frame on Saturday, Sunday nights or whatever. Um, overall, I give tonight's episode... A C plus, my lowest score yet, and that's because of the duplicate scenes. It's because the back and forth on do we expand, do we not expand, the switching of the ideas. Uh, it was a lot of going back and forth to the lab. That was getting on my nerves. Uh, I want Walter to get out of that goddamn room. Can we get another room in this house, please? Yeah, so those are my reasons. And then um, Janara's hair rude and offensive so yeah i give the tonight's episode a c plus the writing wasn't as strong for me in this episode and i need for them to stop dressing claude like a librarian that's why i call her sweater set because her outfits although they're chic they're very dowdy but that's my review on the power book for force once again, if you like the outfit that I am wearing, check out Pretty Girl Parlor Curvy Teak and use my 20% discount code PINK20 when you check out. I love you guys, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.